Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on find the duplicate number. So in this problem, you're given an array of integers containing n plus 1 integers, where each integer is in the range 1 to n inclusive, and there's only one repeated number, and you want to return that, and you must solve the problem without modifying the array and uses only constant space. So this problem is pretty easy if you use a set, right, or something like that. Or obviously, if you modify the array, or you make you know make a new array, like all those are pretty easy. But the constant space solution is actually not super intuitive. I'd say it's not very intuitive at all. But I will briefly talk about it. Or I guess I, that's the one I'm going to be doing. But yeah, if you wanted to do a set, it would be super easy. You would just store the numbers in the set, whichever one you run into twice. You could do that. I don't think I even need to code that up. But let's actually go through how we would do the uh, n time solution and the o1 space. So let's say we have this, and this is going to be clearer if we draw it in a slightly different way. So let's draw these indices as well. So this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw these in a linked list, and it's going to work the same way as a linked list, but let's say I draw these in a linked list. So we're going to have value 0, it's going to point to 1, the value will be the index, and then the pointer is going to be whatever is actually in here. So 0 points to 1. Now 1 points to 3. Now 3 points to 2. 2 points to 4. And 4 points to 2, right? Like this. So let's just double check, right? So we have, remember, this is going to be the values. And then these things in here are where they go, where they point to. So 0 value points to 1. 1 points to 3, 2 points to 4, 3 points to 2, and 4 points to 2. So this is the representation in a linked list. And now notice that the duplicate value is the start of the cycle, right? And that's always going to be the case because there's going to be two things that point to whatever value we're going to. So no matter what's duplicated, and I'll show that in this other example, that's going to be the start of the cycle. So essentially our problem is, given a linked list with a cycle, find where the cycle starts. And that can be done using the Floyd's tortoise and the hare. And the way that works is you have a slow pointer and you have a fast pointer. They start at the same place. And then there are two parts to this algorithm. So the first part is move slow pointer one and fast pointer two until they meet. So let's do that first part. Essentially, so for this first step, the fast pointer will move up once, then the slow pointer will move up uh, the fast pointer will move two steps, right? And the fast point and the slow pointer will move one. So that's after one step, they're over here. Now we're going to do it again. Let's actually just do this. So the fast pointer will move over here, and the slow pointer will move over here. And let's delete these. Okay. Now we are going to move the slow pointer over here, and the fast pointer will move over to the same place, right? It'll go here and then here. So now we are there. And then finally, the slow pointer will move over here, right? The fast pointer is going to keep looping here because it's a two, it's a two list loop. So now they meet. So this is where they meet. Now there is a second part of the tortoise and the hare, which says start at the start of the list and where F and S met, and then move those pointers one at a time or like one distance together until they meet. So it is a super unintuitive algorithm, but essentially once this fast and this slow, slow meet, you get rid of this and now we have two pointers again. So we have a pointer here and we have a pointer here. Let's call that N or something. And essentially you move these up one at a time and they are guaranteed to meet in the start of the cycle. So let's see what that's going to look like, right? So in order for N to get to the start of the cycle, that has to move forward three times. So I'm not going to show one at a time, right? So n has to move 1, 2, 3 to get over here. Now let's look where this goes in 3, right? It'll go here, then it'll come back, and then it'll come back here. So they will intersect here. If you just move s up 3 times, right, it'll move here, then here, then here. So they will meet at the start of the cycle. So wherever they meet is that duplicate value as we have this 2, right? So that's kind of how you do the algorithm. You move s and f until they meet. You move S1 and F2, and then you start. You put another node to start, 
and then you put one more node wherever that S, or you don't have to, you can reuse the old S wherever that S and F met, and you just move them one at a time and they're guaranteed to meet at the start of the cycle. So now let's actually redo this logic again with this problem here, just to like, if you didn't get it, we're going to do it one more time for this problem here. So we have three, one, three, four, two, right? And remember, these values are actually like where these linked lists would point to. So it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now let's draw out the linked list. So we have zero that points to three, three points to four, four points to two, two points to three, and then we're missing one that points to itself. So one is actually just going to be like outside of it. It's going to point over here. And so notice if a node points to itself, then it's just going to be not in this list, right? And we can never get to it. Right? Like it's not possible. I, I guess it is possible, but if you have like two cycles like this, the cycle we care about is a cycle that two nodes point to. So even though there is a cycle here, that's not going to be a problem because we're never going to get to this part. So there can be two cycles or multiple cycles where a bunch of nodes point to themselves, but the main cycle you're concerned with are the no are the one that new two nodes point to. So we're not going to have a problem if we start here again. So we're going to start the slow and the fast pointer just like we did last time. So we're going to start slow and the fast, and we're going to move them one at a time. So after the first movement, the slow is going to move over here. The fast is going to be over here. Now we, oh, let's actually put the slow back in. Okay, now after one more, the fast is going to go one, two, so it'll be over here now, and the slow will be over here, so let's get rid of those, so that and that. Now let's move again, so you can see the slow would move over here, and the fast would also move over here, it would move two. So this is where they intersect. Now we put in our new node over here, and now we do the same thing, right? So we have our old slow pointer, and we have the new node, and we move them one at a time until they intersect. And so you can see, right, when I move them once, they will intersect, right? New node will move over here, and the slow pointer will come back over here. So once again, they move to the duplicate node. So that's pretty much all you need to do is you need to have an S and an F that are going to start at location. And where is it going to be? It's going to be at this index, like this first number, right? They're both going to start at this first number. And then essentially, the way you know where to move is you just move to whatever number is. So let's say they both start here and this is one, that means you would move to index one. Then like if you were over here, you'd move to index three and so on. So the numbers in here are where you're moving to. And then these indices right here represent like the quote unquote value of the linked list. So now we have enough to code it up. We have these two parts and we have enough to code it up. And I know the solution is not super intuitive for sure, but this is the best way. There might be another way to do it in O of N time and O of one space, but this is like kind of the best way or maybe the easiest one to come up with like once you've once you've seen the Floyd cycle detection it should be the one you're thinking of but if you haven't seen it it's basically impossible to solve this problem so okay so now let's code it up so we're going to start with we can actually call these like the tortoise and the hare by representing the fast and slow pointer if we wanted to but let's just say slow and fast right so slow and fast they're going to start at the first number so num0 and num0 now, they are going to start at the first number, so you want to make sure that you move them before you compare, right? Because they're going to be equal at the start, but you want to make sure you move them and then and then you find the next place they're equal. So you can just say while true or something, right? Just to make sure that they move one time. So you could say while true, uh, slow equals num slow. And then you want to move the fast twice. So fast equals, so to move it once, you would do nums fast right wherever that is and then to move it again you would just do nums nums fast pretty much right so this is how you move it twice essentially you're always moving to the index that's in the current thing in the array right like i showed you in the picture so if we are like here we want to move to this index and so if you did like nums nums like let's say what let's see what nums nums looks like the so nums nums of one so nums of one would be over here right so we move over here and then we do nums of that again, so then we'd move over here, which is right where we want to be. So that's how you do that. Okay, so you move the slow once, you move the fast twice. Pretty straightforward. And there is guaranteed to be a cycle, so you're always going to like hit a cycle in this linked list. So now we need to check if they are the same. So if slow equals fast, 
we can break here because that's what we, that means we actually you know are slow and or fast ran into each other so now we need to like i said we need to make a new slow node and need to start the started list and we need to compare that to the slow node so we can say like new slow equals num zero and then we just do while new slow does not equal slow in this case we don't have to move them because in the beginning they're never equal right the cycle um maybe maybe they can't start at the start yeah i guess they can start at the start if actually no i don't think it, i don't think they i don't think they can because in this list i think the numbers are numbered like one to n or something so you can't have anything loop back over here because nothing can ever be zero the numbers are one to n i think yeah so so it can never be that like the cycle is right at this very first node it has to be at the second node or later okay so while new slow does not equal slow you just move them both up right so you just say slow equals num slow and then you say new slow equals nums new slow and then finally now they once they intersect what are we actually asked to return we're actually asked to return the duplicate number right so the number is going to be whatever the value of that node is because that's like the the uh where we are in the linked list essentially okay so then we're going to want to do that so it's actually sorry it's not going to be the value of the node it's going to be the index right because like in this picture um you see that like these indices are the values of the linked list so you're going to be at some index you don't want to return the value that's at index two you want to actually return index two so if you want to return the index that's going to be like what the value of the slow pointer is because the value of the slow pointer will be that index so then we want to return the slow pointer or the new slow either one so definitely quite confusing problem um i would encourage you to walk through this algorithm and maybe try some other things to just like understand it better but once you understand that it's pretty like it's pretty straightforward you just have it like a list like a linked list and then you have a fast and slow pointer wherever they intersect is where the slow pointer needs to be and then you make a new slow pointer that always starts at the start of the list and then whatever wherever the new slow pointer and the slow pointer uh, intersect is going to be always the start of the cycle or or the repeating number and there are uh there are proofs for this i'm not going to go over like a proof for a tortoise, tortoise in the hair you can look it up if you want to but essentially it always works and yeah so let's actually try that we didn't do that yet Let's admit. And it's kind of all over the place, but this is like as efficient as you get with a solution. There might be like something else, but yeah. It's pretty pretty much as efficient you get as you get with a solution, at least in terms of uh time and space complexity. So let's go through with that, right, as well. So for the time, this is basically an O of N solution because the slow and the fast pointer like might loop a few times, but it's gonna be some multiple of N. It's not gonna be some crazy thing in this linked list. Like the fast pointer might loop around a few times before before it hits a slow pointer, but it's going to be like some multiple of n. And then obviously the slow and the slow pointer are also gonna, you know, they might loop around a little bit. I don't even know if they would. Not I, no, they can't actually. They can't loop around, right? Because they move at the same speed. So if they were both in the cycle at the same time, like let's say the slow pointer was over here and the new slow pointer was over here, they would never hit. So you're guaranteed to basically move only the amount that you need to get to the start of the cycle, which is which has to be n or less, right? So this part is n or less, and then this part is like some multiple of n, but it's never going to be like n squared. It might be like a few times n or something. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, let's go through the space as well. I forgot about that one. So we have a slow and a fast, which is just two constant content space variables, right? And that's all we have. And we need slow also content space variable. So no matter how big this gets, we will only have a slow fast and a new slow. So that's going to be an O of 1 space solution. And yeah, I think that's everything for this problem. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. And if you did like this problem, then please uh, like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.